Shouldn't the way you buy products in an outsourcing situation help you maximize the value that you're bringing to your products and to your customers? We believe so, and we've come up with a pricing transparency model that's designed to do just that. We all know how we used to do buying and a lot of in-person meetings. That was before Zoom became such a common thing. A uh, lot of paper drawings that then transitioned to CAD, and now uh, 3D models are pretty much the standard in our industry. Um, you know, we always would have to get three quotes for everything and put them on a spreadsheet to see, hey, how are we going to present to our boss what we're doing? Um, and typically it was all about pricing, lead time, the quality was assumed, and a lot of the other parts of the process were assumed. And finally, back in the day, we used to get long-term contracts, which is really much a thing of the past now. So uh, our first exposure to an idea around pricing transparency came when we were dealing with some big companies. Uh, GE was one of the more notorious and, and they make some great products, but they have some pretty uh, sophisticated ways of making sure that they get value, what they call value, out of their supply chain. And one of them uh, was what they called their should cost model. And they wanted to have you write down or submit to them really every aspect of what you were doing as a part of producing parts for them so that they could use it as a club to beat you with and to drive your price down really regardless of of what else was going on there and as much as that was frustrating back in the good old days and we didn't believe that they deserved that um, we've actually come around to think that it, to realize that if we develop a process that involves getting together with our vendors and when we're a vendor to other customers getting the engineers in the room to determine what are we really trying to accomplish what are the cost drivers in this when what we're doing and how can we maximize the value using the knowledge and information from everybody involved so these days customers want clarity around their pricing everybody goes on a google search to see hey what should something cost and wh where can i get it for less um, you know the the workforce is getting younger and the computer technology is getting better and the opportunity to do searches online to see what different things should cost and be able to to get that we just have the clarity that we never used to have and visibility that we never used to have and and so when we make custom products or when you're looking to get custom products sorted it can be a little frustrating that you have to kind of get through to somebody to get a price as opposed to just being able to pull it up online. And that can be frustrating um, because there's a lot of things coming at us that it's hard to know and we're trying to get answers and that can be frustrating. So um, having the way we buy stuff, you know, the traditional what we'll call the buyer seller dance, um, you know, it has a series of typical steps that we'll go through and then we can talk about, hey, is there ways that we could add steps to that process that might add value to it? and make the overall result a better for everybody. So typically, uh, technical information would get sent out. We send it to our vendors. Our customers would send it to us to review. They'd send it to a number of folks and they'd get quotes. And so you'd get quotes returned from potential suppliers. You'd put them on a spreadsheet to compare. Factors like lead time, certainly price, and, and other factors might come in. Um, but oftentimes, the, the project would be you know, given to the low cost provider that could pr produce it in the time required. The project gets completed and now it's in the system. You know, typically you don't requote every single time you run. You get a price set in the system and it can run for a long period of time. Um, and, you know, it pops back up. It tells you it's time to order and you go. So uh, in the pricing transparency model, there's a couple significant differences that we have the technical specs still, of course, get sent out to the potential suppliers. But then there's an engineering review, which is uh, rarely done as a matter of course. For us, it's part of the, the absolute engagement of what we're doing. Um, you know, we can look at to make sure we understand what, what is involved and we can put together a ballpark price pretty easily to make sure we're in the realm of possibility. Um, it's more than one occasion uh, we've talked to somebody and they have uh, a price that is, is not something we're going to be able to come anywhere close to. Um, and so, you know, that becomes an opportunity to, to realize that, hey, this probably isn't a fit for us and maybe we all ought to just 
walk away. So that go, no go to move forward, we can establish typically relatively quickly. And then we get into a worksheet and a detailed cost analysis. And the opportunity to dig in and really see, hey, this is what it's gonna cost. Uh, and these are the type, you know, the machines that we need to run it on and the process that we put through in pretty significant detail. And the idea is there to lay out with the customer, ultimately that engineering review to see, hey, here's where the cost drivers, here's where the time is, and these are the features that are causing us the additional setups or the, the larger machine or a more talented machinist to be able to run the project. And so we can go through a bunch of those factors and working based on what they know about how the part's being used and the, part, the aspects of the part that are causing additional or increased cost uh, are very, you know, become obvious and it helps everybody understand what those drivers are. So then once that's completed, the buyer still has an opportunity to compare prices with other vendors, award the project, um, and let's pretend in this case that the project ended up coming to us after we went through this. It's planned, we get the order, weekly updates are sent as typical for us, the project gets completed, and the other aspect that is different besides that upfront review is the follow-on review. And that's looking at how did the project go and what are the opportunities to improve what the process was, what are the areas now that we've actually run the parts that actually gave us more trouble than we might have thought, what's the stuff that, hey, if we, once we got to know the part a little bit, there's an opportunity to change to a different machine or to be able to uh, have a, a less skilled machinist be able to run certain aspects of it, for example. Um, so to be able to determine what a reorder uh, process would look like and what the new pricing would be. Uh, the material cost, which we've seen in recent days, fluctuations ba based on inflation um, and availability, the opportunities to have each time the job gets run to quote out the material and see, hey, what is the cost associated with that? Um, you know, when, when prices are going up, uh, you know, it's challenging for everybody to deal with when they're coming down. Typically, most of us feel like our vendors are not giving us the benefit of that price when it's going down. When the price is going up, they usually come asking for more money. And so the opportunity to just lay that on the table, hey, we have a standard markup that we put on that, that we share and go through, um, helps everybody get a good sense of, hey, here's what actually is going on based on this job. And so instead of locking that price in for life, uh, the price gets uh, established. And, and typically that means you know, the second time we go or third time we go to run something, we've got more experience. We know the setup time will then be reduced. We don't have to make new fixturing. We can just reset the job up, which does not take nearly as much time. So there's definitely cost savings that are available in that process. Um, and yet having hard numbers from what we ran the last time, sometimes we guessed low. And so sometimes that that those numbers can go up. So it really varies. But the bottom line is it allows us to drive to the actually the best way to run the project so that it can provide overall the best value for our customer. So why doesn't everybody do it this way? Well, there's a number of reasons and mostly based on convenience and fear. Um, you know, the, the fear from a vendor standpoint of exposing more, uh, more information than they might want to be, recognizing that most cases it's a competitive experience where a potential customer is talking to us and we know they're talking to other shops, it only makes sense. And if we share something that, that is a technique or a way that we think it might work best for us, that they'd share that with our comp competitors and they could beat us in the job. And, and we used to worry about that. Uh, I think now we recognize that you know an idea in our shop that would work well for us may not work well somewhere else. And the bottom line is, is I'd rather share with a customer the opportunity that we have to help them be successful and not worry about whether they're gonna take it and, and run to have somebody else use it or use it internally against us, against us. Um, and, and obviously to get into that level of detail and not have it turn into work afterwards, hey, we'll do that once or twice, but, but then if we're just becoming a, a manufacturing consultant, maybe we'll, we'll think twice about going on, but that's not happened to us. Um, you know, the fear of not getting three prices or multiple choices to choose from, understandable, uh, you know, the history we have of wanting to get multiple shops to, to try and tell us what they think it's worth. We might find one that either has a better way to do it or just misses. 
and and as a buyer hey we'll take that miss and we'll save some money but ultimately we know that the actual value of what is being produced is a really a driver of our long-term success and opportunity to, to be competitive uh, as a as a customer vendor partnership um, and and the other aspect and we're pretty clear about this at what point is a commitment made and, and really uh, going through the process we welcome these kinds of conversations with our customers uh, and our prospective customers and, and the no commitment is made when we go through this energy obviously until a purchase order is cut um, and in which case now we are moving forward together on a project but so you know that fear of hey how much work and help am I gonna provide to somebody before they're actually locked into us and we tend to be more generous uh, in that regard because it's, it's a great way to to partner and learn what's going on on both sides of the equation to, to achieve the best value. And finally, and most importantly, the reason most people don't do this is it's way easier to just send out some information, wait for prices to come back, put them on a spreadsheet and let it go. It's the, re it's the why, how it's been done for a long time, and it is significantly easier than trying to gather engineering teams, gather quality teams to make sure that we know, hey, how is the park gonna be run? How is it being used? How is it gonna be checked? And yet putting in that extra effort can yield a tremendous uh, extra value as a result. But it does take more time and energy and not everybody's up for that. So listing out some of the pros uh, of, of going through this process, obviously a thorough evaluation of product cost to include the mating parts and the methodology that we're gonna use to produce a part. Greater dialogue between the buyer and the supplier engineering teams to, to the prior to the project can help have understanding and drive value through the process. The after action review following the project completion, document the lessons learned and the opportunities to improve, um, you know, ongoing price adjustments for each process improvement for each run. Um, the pricing fluctuates with market conditions. When the material prices are going down, that's definitely seen as a pro from our customers. On the con side, it is a more involved process requiring extra steps. It's faster just to get the quotes. It's, it's for simple, very simple parts. It may be too much effort to go through um, to use the whole, the whole process um, requiring getting engineering involved. So oftentimes the buyers can't do it by themselves and they need to get other people involved, which just requires extra coordination that definitely is seen by a con when it's hard to, to get busy engineers to come to a call or, or come to the table. Um, you know, a limiting supplier uh, option of having at least three quotes. Uh, you know, we still encourage folks to get other people involved in, in quoting stuff. Obviously, we wanna partner with prospective customers to make sure that we're providing the best value. Um, and then pricing fluctuations with market conditions. When material prices are going up, obviously the price is gonna go up when we lay out, hey, here's what, it, what the quote was and what it, was, what it cost us. Um, and that just doesn't feel as good when the market's going up. And yet the fact is most of us long-term would rather just have the material price be what is achievable at that time rather than just waiting to see, all right, where is it going up or down? Does it get where it's going up enough for our vendors to push back on a, for a price increase? Or when do we see that the market has gone down that we push on our vendors to say, hey, the price of steel has gone down a lot. You should probably be costing less. So those are the pros and the cons of the process. Um, you know, what do we stand to gain? The synergy of, of engineering and quality teams, both prior to and after. Uh, the project using real numbers and real information. Um, that after project feedback is based on the real results and what we've seen. We brainstorm improvement ideas and obviously deal with changing marketing market conditions for the material. So if you want to experience what that looks like or talk about it, uh, click below and send us an inquiry and we'll be happy to talk through with you.